In 2019, the Emergency Care Research Institute published an executive summary that discussed the numerous studies showing a link between a positive safety culture where safety is a shared priority and improved patient safety within a healthcare organization. The evidence was so convincing that the National Patient Safety Foundation lists leadership support for a safety culture as the most important of eight recommendations for achieving patient safety. The term safety culture has been defined by various groups and organizations. Generally, safety culture is viewed as an organization's shared perceptions, beliefs, values, and attitudes that combine to create a commitment to safety and an effort to minimize harm. Simply, safety culture is the combination of attitudes and behaviors towards patient safety that are conveyed when you walk into the healthcare facility. To help you create a safety culture in your practice, here are four key aspects you can start implementing today. The first key aspect is understanding that patients are only as safe as the workforce. This means that the workforce or your team should be both physically and psychologically safe. Team members should be safe from violence, aggression, threats, and the many hazards that are present in our day-to-day -day activities like dental sharps and bloodborne pathogens, even ergonomics. Team members should also be free of intimidation, bullying, disrespect, distrust, and incivility. The second key aspect is that a safety culture is no accident. In a recent annual conference by the Organization for Safety, Asepsis, and Prevention, a presenter said that a safety culture is not incidental. It requires planning, activation, and management. Leaders in the dental practice should foster a culture of trust, reporting, and learning while building a work environment that allows team members to provide safe, quality care. The third key aspect is understanding that it isn't just about how we turn over an operatory or the disinfectants we use, the mask we wear, or the gloves we don for patient care. These products are easily found from Henry Schein and are obviously important, and preventing infection control breaches is critical. But a safety culture should also aim to prevent delays in treatment, over treatment, misdiagnosis, injuries to the patient, and even preventing wrong site issues that could include the extraction of the wrong tooth. The fourth key aspect is cultivating an environment that allows for psychological safety for all team members. Everyone should be able to ask questions without feeling disruptive or foolish. Dental professionals should be able to ask for feedback without being shamed or made to feel incompetent, and should be able to raise awareness about potential adverse events or infection control breaches without punitive action. If this is the first time you have heard of a safety culture and how important it is to not only create safe dental appointments for patients, but also to create a team that feels safe in their work environment, I encourage you to investigate this further. There are many resources like the one I mentioned from the ECRI that can help you on this journey, and I promise you won't regret it. For more resources on creating a safety culture in your practice, please visit osap.org or ada.org.